Hey guys, how are you doing? Spelunky and Hades, they're both roguelikes. They both take similar parts of the roguelike recipe, but they're very different games. So let's go into that a little bit. We're gonna be taking a specific look at four of these elements. We're gonna take a look at procedural generation. We're gonna take a look at permadeath. We're gonna take a look at resource management. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at progression. So let's jump right into it and talk about procedural design. Each new run of both of these games introduces random elements to increase the level of replayability. So starting off, they both have randomly generated levels, but they do it in a bit of a different way. In Spelunky, you have a path that is generated from the beginning, the entrance of an area, to the exit of an area, and then the rest of the area is filled in. And this leads to more of a unique and random experience in each and every playthrough. Whereas in Hades, you have a string of levels in each world, and each of those levels is populated from a huge list of authored levels. This gives more control to the devs over things like pacing and difficulty at the sacrifice of some of the randomness that Spelunky embraces. However, there is some level of persistence, things you can always expect to experience in some of your runs. For example, in Spelunky, you'll always have the opportunity to go to the black market. You'll always have the opportunity to go to Vlad's lair. You'll always have the opportunity to accidentally bounce and fall into lava or that one might just be me. In Hades, there aren't really that many offshoot paths you could take, maybe the only exception being chaos, but that's really not persistent. That happens at random times during your run. But in both games, the boss rooms will always be in the same area. But in Spelunky, you'll always fight Olmec, for example, and Olmec will always use the same strategies against you, no matter what the run. But in Hades, the bosses sort of evolve as you play throughout the game over and over. After you beat Meg enough times, for example, you might end up versing one of her sisters, and the Hydra evolves as you progress. In this way, Hades kind of has an extra layer over Spelunky, in my opinion, on boss fights. And there's another place here where I think Hades kind of takes it to the next level. The boons and bonuses you get throughout the run are always different. This has you playing some runs in which your character is completely busted and overpowered, whereas in other runs you might be barely getting by and having a hard time. This is a major component to these kind of games and what adds a great amount of replayability as, you know, a run in which you're having a super easy time cutting down all of your enemies will play inherently differently from a run in which you have to really calculate your moves in order to make sure that you make the best of what you have. This contrasts a bit with Spelunky for me, whereas a lot of runs can feel very similar. Due to this, they start melding together in my mind in a constant stream of pain, death, and pain. Whereas I don't really ever feel that way with Hades. We'll talk a bit more about what Spelunky does in this area in a later section. But for now, we're going to be moving on to Permadeath. Both games feature it, but one is a bit more punishing than the other. Both in Spelunky and Hades, when your health bar reaches zero, you die. Your run ends. When you die, you lose any progress you gained and you're sent back to the beginning. Both games, however, do have ways to circumvent the death mechanic. In Spelunky, you can get the Ankh. And the Ankh makes it so that when you die, you respawn back at the beginning of that level, with all your items minus whatever you were holding in your hands. The core difference here is that you have to work for this Ankh. Each run, you have to beat Olmec in order to secure the Ankh, so it's not something that you have all the time. Whereas in Hades, with progression and with keepsakes, you can earn yourself permanent revive, so that each time you start a run, your character has two or three health bars all the time. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the last section, progression. I also feel like it's important to lay out the challenges that the player faces, right? Because death is kind of relevant to how difficult the game is. Spelunky is the Australia of video games. <laughs> there are plenty of things that could instantly kill you, no matter how much health you have, just like in real life. Whereas this isn't really true in Hades. Hades also has more ways for you to restore health. There are some ways that you could do it in Spelunky, but they're pretty difficult, whereas in Hades, you just have to walk into another room and you restore some more health, and you have pools after bosses that you could drink from to heal a bunch of your health back. So health is a resource, but let's talk about the other resources. In this section, resource management. Just gonna jump in here and say, if you are enjoying what you're watching, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you are notified when I release new content. In Hades, you collect darkness, gems, keys, nectar, coins, and bounty artifacts, things like Titan Blood, for example. You can use coins to buy things at shops during your run, but when you die, those coins are lost. You do not carry your coins through to different runs. However, with pretty much every other resource, you bring that back after your run in order to buy stuff and improve and make your character stronger. But in Spelunky, anything that you get during your run is lost when you die. Players start out with a few ropes and a few bombs and, you know, good luck finding the rest for yourself. But when you die, they're all gone. With shops, however, Spelunky can add in a little bit of this run I feel completely overpowered versus this run I feel like I'm barely getting anything. Whereas, you know, you walk into a shop and there's a shotgun, bomb stacks, 
and a jetpack, you're like, well, thank you, God. I will take this and I will fly with it. But that doesn't happen every run. But this ends up being less impactful than in Hades, as you'll still get one shot by literally everything and their abuelita. And specifically on this, in Hades, it's important to get coins so that you can buy some critical things that you might need to help you advance. But in Spelunky, if you're good enough and know what you're doing, you can kind of circumvent this mechanic and you just kind of kill the shopkeep and take all of their stuff for the low, low price of free, assuming that you can handle killing shopkeeps at the end of each level, which uh, I'm not good at. And this brings us to our last point, progression. The games differ a lot here, but they do both offer progression in some way to players. Hades does this in a truly great way, I think. Narratively, the story progresses after you die. Characters remember how you died and they'll talk to you about it. Some characters might be missing. This kind of gives you a real sense that you are in a story that is moving both with and without you. And it kind of eases the pain of dying and losing a good run, where you kind of talk to the characters about it and you have time to decompress. In Spelunky, the way the game provides progression is through pretty much the tunnel system. When you transition, for example, from 1-4 to 2-1, you'll have Tunnel Girl asking you for some resources. If you visit her enough and give her enough, she'll build you a tunnel. And then you can skip right to the end of 1-4 and start your run essentially from World 2. That's pretty much all Spelunky does in that. Yeah, good luck. In Hades, remember when we talked about darkness keys, artifacts, that whole shebang? This is the heart of their progression. In between runs, you can spend these resources on a variety of things. You can use darkness at the mirror in order to apply buffs to your character. And this part makes the game much more accessible as you could overcome a lack of skill with sheer power that you get from leveling up your character. This can be a, a bit of a contentious part for some people as some people just really love the brutality of roguelike games. And for that reason, they might like Spelunky much more. In Hades though, after you finish your first run, you can kind of add modifiers that make your runs more difficult if you're really after a challenge. With keys, you can unlock new weapons or new tiers of upgrades that you can spend darkness on after that. Artifacts can be used to unlock weapon aspects, which can change the game a lot. And lastly, you can use the gems in the gem shop. You can change the aesthetics of your area, but more importantly, you can do things like add safe rooms into the pool of levels that the game picks from when it's generating a world. And you can even add a way to exchange your keepsakes in between floors, which can kind of let you add a strategic element to your approach. Overall, both games take ingredients from the recipe of a roguelike, and they employ them in different ways and end up with very different games. Hades goes for a much more broad audience approach, which lets them spend more time and money on things like production value, voiceovers, artwork, where Spelunky has their hardcore community, and to that community, Spelunky is a masterpiece. And both games are absolutely fantastic, but they're definitely made for different people. Which game do you prefer, and why? I'd love to hear from you. Tell me in the comments below what you think. If you want to talk more about games, head on over to my Twitch channel and give me a follow there so you're notified when I go live. Link will be in the description, and as always, thank you so much for watching, happy gaming.